Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the world, uh, joining us today. I'm grateful that you all are, are hopping on to learn more about our mentorship program and uh, to hear a little bit more about the expectations of it, the, the objectives, and what you can expect throughout the application process. Uh, my name is Jen Kafasnika, and I am the manager of the National Council on Administrative Fellowships Program. I'll hand it off to Ali. Hi, uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ali Ibrahim. I am the senior manager of the USKIP program here at NCHL. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here today. My name is Ren Lovegood. I use the pronouns they, them, and I am the senior manager of the Leadership Excellence Networks, which is what we refer to as LENS here at NCHL. Thanks for joining us today. So I will go ahead and get us uh, kicked off and started here. Um, thinking about, we we initially started this program in 2021, um, really with the, the thought to have this be uh, opportunity to find like-minded healthcare leaders and opportunities for them to to mentor and and be part of a network of of larger healthcare leaders. So the next round, obviously, we are accepting applications now, um, and we anticipate this to run from April to November of this year. And thinking about the program itself and kind of what we hope our our participants get out of this is that it brings together like I said, a cohort of, of professionals that are looking to really impact and, and promote uh, the healthcare space. And then also honing in on and developing those, those career development skills, whether it be communication or, you know, tasks and planning and project management and being able to foster an opportunity to, to move up the career ladder. Uh, also thinking about the mentor-mentee relationship and how we can not only further the mentee through their career, but also helping the the mentor kind of learn to um, be a mentor and and create that that environment. Um, obviously, discussing the different key trends throughout the industry as we we see a lot of change. The only constant in healthcare is change, and then developing just kind of overarching future leaders. Some of the important dates that I want to highlight for um, this this cycle specifically, we've started to accept applications and we'll accept those through March 2nd. And then looking at mid-March to have those, those mentor-mentee matches and you'll be notified of those matches. And then starting in late March um, through November, we'll have the program run. And then we typically anticipate uh, that you're meeting with your mentor or mentee for about one to two hours per month, working to connect and, and work on any sort of goals that you create. Thinking about the programmatic um, elements of the program itself, that we're really looking to provide, again, the opportunity for uh, increasing mentorship skills across the relationship. And then also looking to identify those uh, goals that you can reach together through um, whether that be different projects that you have at your organization or individual professional development goals that you wanna set, looking at SMART goals as an opportunity to, to further that. And then lastly, building those relationships that expand beyond the program. We really hope that you create a, an environment that you're encouraged and you keep pursuing after the program just to be able to share um, the outcomes and really uh, brought in that network of, of healthcare leaders. All right, I'm going to um, uh, switch gears here and take over here. So thanks, Jen. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the application process and placement. Um, so as Jen mentioned, we did open applications on January 27th, and we see a number of folks have applied and submitted applications. So thank you for that. Um, the application window will close on March 2nd. So if you haven't applied yet to be a mentor or a mentee, um, you're welcome to do so until March 2nd. So once the application window closes, then we're going to uh, evaluate the applications and um, match mentors with mentees. And I, I just wanted to mention that as you're filling out your application um, and filling out the sections that we're asking you about, um, please fill out as much information as possible. That way it can help us match you with the best mentor or mentee. So, you know, the more information you give us, the more helpful it will be, it will be for us to be able to match you with uh, the best match possible. 
Um, so some of the areas that we match mentors and mentees on are the areas of work, um, certain specialties and interests they might have or share, and um, also if there's any individual needs that have been communicated um, by both parties, we try to look at those and match uh, mentors and mentees up accordingly. Um, and so once you're matched, we will inform you of uh, that you've been matched and who your match is. And then we are going to schedule a program orientation. Um, and this will help us um, go over expectations and kind of you know, serve as a kickoff for the mentorship program. So expecting that you know, once we have the orientation, you should um, at least have reached out uh, to your mentor or mentee and um, start having the monthly meetings after that point. Um, and so we just wanna mention that, you know, we don't limit the number of uh, participants um, who are able to apply or be placed to the program, but, you know, it is based on availability, how many mentors we might get, and just our best judgment in terms of who the best matches would be. So that goes to say that we hope everyone can get a match, but uh, we cannot guarantee that everybody will be matched. And um, you can go to the next slide, Jim. All right, so um, an important question for us to consider is who should apply to be a mentor? So um, some guidelines that we've created for the program is that you know, folks who are in a management leadership role, um, who are in a mid, mid to senior level position, ideally those would be mentors. Um, you know, you're not so much an early careerist, you have some experience under your belt, um, ideally, um, over seven years, you know, so, so 10 years, seven to 10 years or more of experience. Um, you know, you should also be able to commit at least one to two hours per month to your mentee uh, for at least eight months. Um, if you are able to commit more time and you find that, um, you know, works for you, um, that's great. Um, but we are asking for at least one to two hours a month uh, for a duration of eight months. Um, you're welcome to continue meeting after that point, but um, we definitely, uh, you know, ask for at least eight months. Um, and of course, you know, while we try, this is a program that's available to the entire healthcare community, and while we try to match everybody who applies, um, you know, we we are um, looking at matching our NCHL program institutions uh, primarily. Um, so we'll be giving consideration to to those applications um, as a priority. Um, so, um, you know, other criteria for mentors, you know, it should be someone that is goal oriented, um, interesting in developing your leadership skills and supporting, you know, others, this whole notion of, you know, paying it forward um, or paying it back, uh, however you look at it, um, and uh, really invested in, in wanting to help develop the next generation of healthcare leaders. Um, and so, you know, we, we're looking, you know, we're, we're interested in uh, allowing an opportunity for um, mentors and mentees to kind of showcase their, um, their skills and kind of talk about their mentorship journey. And so we're hoping that uh, as a result of the mentor-mentee um, matches this year, uh, there'll be a final deliverable um, kind of showcasing how the mentee was helped by their mentor and how that process helped develop the uh, mentee and um, and how the mentor you know, contributed to that. So, um, you know, of course, this is a great opportunity for professional networking, um, you know, supporting early careerists. You might have had a mentor yourself in that stage of your career. Um, and so this is an opportunity to do the same. Um, and, you know, we love feedback. So, you know, anyone who's able to give us feedback about um, how to shape and improve the program, in future years, we definitely welcome you to be a mentor as well. Um, next slide, Jen. Okay, so now that we've talked about um, who should apply to be a mentor, let's uh, talk about who should apply to be a mentee. So we're looking at mostly you know, recent graduates, fellows, um, folks who are new to the healthcare sector, maybe new, new to the healthcare you know, career, can change careers, and early careerists. So ideally, individuals who have seven years of professional experience or less within the healthcare sector. Um, so if you, you know, have 10 years in another sector, I think, you know, you would be still invited to apply as a mentee if you're kind of new to healthcare and just getting your feet wet in healthcare. Um, and you're not holding, you know, a leadership position such as a, you know, VP or 
executive director or something. Um, and, um, you know, again, um, we're uh, preferring NCHL program institutions. So similar, you know, to the mentors, um, also same applies for the mentees. And we really um, would love to, uh, you know, being a mentee and being matched with a mentor, um, you know, this is a time commitment. So we really uh, encourage the mentees to take advantage of their mentors. And again, to kind of meet that mentor at that commitment of one to two hours. Um, if there's, you know, anything that happens and you can't meet, you know, of course you can talk to your mentor about that, but really we're looking for someone that's able to meet with a mentor for one to two hours, again, eight months or longer. Um, and someone who's really looking to learn and grow, um, looking to enhance their own leadership skills uh, within healthcare. We're looking to build the future leaders of healthcare. So um, if that sounds like you, then you are welcome to apply as a mentee. Um, and again, we had mentioned, um, we're looking at encouraging an opportunity to showcase um, the mentorship journey. So we are looking at um, mentees creating a final deliverable at the end of the program to showcase what they've accomplished, what they've done, how they've worked with their mentor to improve their skills and you know, whatever way they've done, what some of their goals were, how they've accomplished them. Um, and again, this is a great opportunity to develop and strengthen your pro professional network. And again, um, if you're able to give us feedback about how to improve the program for future years, we welcome that, welcome you to apply. So really this is um, a program for anyone to apply to that thinks they you know, have something to give, have something to learn. Um, I think next slide, Jen. And I think I'm passing it off to you now, Ren. Okay, thanks so much, Alia. So for some examples of prior mentorship pairings that we've been able to facilitate over the last two cycles, um, an example would be an administrative fellow as a mentee with a CEO. While you're looking through the slide, um, we, I will say that from my understanding, having CEOs join as mentors is not as common. Um, and so as Alia had mentioned, being at a director, senior director, VP level um, it would likely mean that you have had multiple years of experience and might be better suited to serve as a mentor. But when you put in your application, we're going to look at them holistically in terms of who has, has applied, what are their interests, where is their potential alignment, uh, and what subjectively is going to be the best opportunity for those who applied to be fit together for matches that are going to be um, valuable to both parties, relevant to your career goals and your learning, and um, overall seem like they'll be a good fit. And Jen, you can go to the next slide. Um, we talked a little bit about the mentorship commitment already. So again, we're looking at an eight-month commitment. We're not going to um, be helping the schedule. It's very much self-directed. So once we have matched a mentor and a mentee, we'll have an orientation. We're going to give out some resources, including um, a link to our NCHL competency model, which really looks at uh, building healthcare leadership competencies in individuals and what that looks like from a measurable perspective. And those might be able to help participants to identify specific areas of personal focus that they want to work on in their relationship with their mentee and mentor. Um, I think in terms of check-ins, we'll also plan on assigning mentor-mentee uh, pairings to one of the three of us as program managers so that you will have a point of contact within the organization if you're having trouble getting in touch with the person you're paired with, if you have questions, if you're looking for additional supports, um, or if anything kind of comes up throughout this, this eight-month cycle, that you'll be able to reach out to a person specifically and kind of have a point of contact to be supporting you through the progress of your relationship as you're growing it. Um, in the applications, there was a code of conduct included that will also be mailed out again in the orientation packet. If you have any questions about it, if you didn't see it um, or catch it when you were going through the application, let us know. We can send it over to you by email just so you can look at it. Um, it just kind of outlines what the expectations are um, for boundaries across both parties just to keep everybody feeling safe and comfortable 
um, and having realistic expectations with one another. Um, it's going to be really important too that mentors and mentees are committed to setting up and adhering to the time that you've committed to one another. Um, eight months is a long time to be working together. And the mentees in particular, we're really hoping to task with identifying what areas of support they want to be growing and need help with so that they can get as much out of the relationship as possible. And that means, you know, being able to respect one another's time, show up to the scheduled meetings that you've put together with one another, um, and really partner with each other and have respect for each other's time in the relationship. Um, additionally, Alia had talked about, we're in the process of figuring out how we can provide additional opportunities for participants to be able to share and showcase the work that they do in this eight month partnership. Um, mm -hmm. Mentorships can be really fruitful for both participants and can lead to mm -hmm. uh, building lifelong relationships and job opportunities and um, all sorts of additional areas of professional development. And we would love to be able to provide some like a stage for those who participate to be able to really showcase how much effort they put into uh, their SMART goals and the outcomes of this program. Um, Something else I wanted to mention, although it's not on here, um, is just, you know, that this is supposed to be something that is fun and beneficial for both parties. And um, we really want to make sure that we're pairing and supporting you and being able to get the most out of this relationship. And I think that moves us on to questions. And I'm thinking that because this is a webinar, likely we're going to have to have questions in the Q&A box, right, Jen? Yeah. So if anyone has questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A box. We can answer as we're going. Um, this has been a pretty high level overview. So I imagine there might be additional questions that you have regarding kind of next steps or what this might look like. How many mentor mentee pairings are you expecting? Um, Holly and Jen, can you remind me how many you said we had last year? Like ballpark? I know you might know, not know the full 100% well, number off the top of your head. I want to say maybe close to 30. Yeah. Around 30. Yeah. 30. And there were some people that were matched. Um, with more than one, there was, you know, some mm -hmm. mentors that took a couple of men mentees. So that's a rare occurrence. Um, um, but that did happen last year. So I think, you know, numbers, um, mm -hmm. let's, so for the application, oh, that's a great question. Um, we, I think I can paste the application here in the mm -hmm. chat. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll also do available on our website. Yes. Um, and then when we send out the recording of this, we'll also include the application link. Thank you for that. We have another question. So do mentors and mentees come from all over the country and from a variety of organizations? Yes. Um, I think that's part of the goal, actually, is to match mentees and mentors from uh, organizations that wouldn't normally have access to one another. Um, and the purpose of that is. Um, you know, your internal organization may already have a mentorship or mentee program already, um, and you may have access to coaches or support staff um, together um, within your organization, but there's a lot to be learned from being able to match interorganizationally. Um, additionally, that we have a question about in-person or virtual. We can't mandate that mentors and mentees meet in person, especially if they are in different states. If we have people who are applying from California and Massachusetts that get um, partnered with one another, it would be unrealistic to expect them to meet in person um, it, as a free program too. From an equity perspective, it would really limit opportunities for connection to spe specific groups of participants. So 
Um, that's not something from an equity perspective that we would have happen um, or would encourage. So we would say that these are going to be virtual meetings. Um, there would be potential for mentors and mentees to get together at our NCHL all member conference, which happens in November in Chicago, um, where uh, a lot of our contacts and supporters, I think we had over 300 participants from 120 hospitals this past year. It was our first joint conference um, and I think our first live conference since COVID hit. Um, and so it it was a, um, a success and we're working on growing that, but that would be an opportunity uh, in terms of being able to meet in person potentially uh, and network not only with your mentor or mentee live for a couple of days, but also with other mentors and mentees who have worked together through this partnership and other members of the LENS, NCHL, NCAF, GEM, and hospital healthcare community. Thanks, Ren. But that's not to say, you know, on the um, in-person meetings, you know, if you are in the same city, happen to be in the same city, or attend the same conference, um, you know, you could meet. Um, it's just, as Fred said, not mandated. And let's um, see more questions. What other questions. It looks like they're asking, um, what are some examples of skills areas that mentees and mentors have worked on together? Um, and I so, yeah, that would be great, Jen. Thank yeah, you. So um, last year, I know a lot of individuals worked on presentation skills when you're thinking about, at least from the administrative fellow perspective, um, and presentation skills, communication, and then even working through a career plan. If, if the mentee wants to get to X position as a director or VP, working with that that mentor on, on how to network and how to be able to achieve those goals have really been kind of the highlights that, that I've seen from the program. And um, I can take the question on um, knowing when your application has been accepted or not. So we are aiming to have um, the matches done kind of mid-March and hopefully notifying everyone whether they whether they got matched or not by the end of March. So, um, you know, close to a month after the application window closes by the end of that month. And I, I think the goal from there would be setting up an orientation um, that would be live and recorded similar to this, uh, what we're doing here um, to be, to recognize we're gonna have people from across the country who have very different schedules, who have different responsibilities in terms of what their meeting cadences look like. And so being able to match um, match them and make sure everyone has access to that same orientation. And again, knows which of the program managers is going to be supporting them through this process, is gonna be available to answer questions. Um, but we would think we'll, we'll probably host that at the end of March so that you all who are participating can schedule your uh, one-on-one -on -one meetings to start in April. Thank you. And we have one more question, um, looks like a duplicate. Um, is this open to research clinical and administrative employees? I would say it kind of depends on who we get as a mentor and a mentee. So if we see a couple of clinical folks that seem like they would be a good match, we would match them. If we have all administrative mentors, and someone you know applying as a mentee that really wants someone clinical, then uh, it probably wouldn't be a great match. So it, it really depends on the pool of applicants that we get. Is anyone ever turned away? Unfortunately, not everyone is able to get matched. So um, you know what we do is um, we can put you on the waiting list for the next year, or if there's some you know something that comes up. Um, and we think you'd be a great match. Um, you know, we've had some rare, rare occasions in the past where that's happened. Um, and so, you know, that is one limitation is that not everyone is guaranteed to get matched with a mentor or a mentee. Um, and for the question about discussing this at your organizations, I mean, I think it depends. If you have folks that you think would be great mentors uh, for the program, for example, um, you know, you certainly encourage them to apply. Um, same thing if you think that there's folks at your organization that can use some, men, you know, 
use a mentor um, would be a good candidate as, as a mentee, encourage them to apply. Um, it all depends on how the final pool of, pool of applicants looks like and you know, based on folks' individual needs and interests. Um, so absolutely, I would encourage you to talk, talk about this at your organization, encourage folks to apply, um, especially if you're um, at an NCHL member organization. We can't guarantee you know, that they'll be matched with someone at their organization, probably with another organization. Um, that's kind of the nature you know, of this, but um, of course, happy to take on as many applications as we can. So um, if they meet the criteria, by all means, apply. Any other questions? And anything to add to those, Ren or Jen? I kind of took the last ones there in a... No, that's no, okay. you did great. I mean, we have a couple more minutes, so we're happy to stay on in case anyone who um, has to hop off or came on late thinks of any questions. Um, again, recognizing just that your schedules are super tight. If you did come on late, um, we will actually be, this is recorded, so we'll be sending this out additionally for people to be able to watch. If you have colleagues who you think would be great to apply as a mentor or a mentee, um, and are, are looking to potentially refer them out to participating in a program, feel free to pass the application around. We're happy to have additional people here. Um, the more people who apply, hopefully the more people we can match and the more uh, we can support our community and their professional development goals. So feel free definitely to share amongst your contacts and your colleagues. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining. Yeah, I'm not seeing any other questions. So um, everyone, I hope you have a great day and we look forward to answering any questions. And thank you so much. Take care everybody. Bye.